Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now this was captured with a mixture of studio flash and LED continuous light. This technique can be used to capture the motion of a subject and yet still render a sharp image. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so here we are. This is what I've got set up so far. So I've got a jar here with some jelly beans in it. Uh, and at the front here, I have my tripod, uh, which has a geared head on the top, and it has a geared center column as well. OK. So for my camera, I'm using uh, this full-frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front and a flash sync trigger on the top. Now, this is also capable of controlling the energy in the studio flashes. The camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results as we go along. Right, so I'll just pop this on the tripod, like that, and we'll just line up the shot. OK, so for this, I just want to uh, zoom it in a little, something like that, about the 35 millimeter mark on the lens should do it. And with that set, I'll just check the focus. Yeah, that looks about OK. OK, so with that now done, the next thing to do would be to turn the camera on, uh, which I can do here. And the software has recognized the camera. So with that done, we can have a look at the settings on the camera. So it's in full manual mode. We have a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. 100 ISO, and the lens is set to an aperture of f8. So with those settings, what I'll do is just capture an image uh, with no flash, just to see uh, what contamination, if anything, we're getting from the house lights. So we can see that at those settings, uh, there is no image to speak of. Uh, but bear in mind that we're going to be using continuous light, and therefore, um, this setting, in particular, the shutter speed, is going to be changed. And that will have a bearing on uh, just what we get in terms of contamination from the house lights. But I'll cover that a little later uh, as we get into the shoot. OK, so the first thing to do then would be to set up a, uh, a flash. Now this is going to be our main light. It's going to illuminate um, the jelly beans on the table here, and it's also going to illuminate the jelly beans that will be dropping into this jar. So what I'm going to do is use this uh, Profoto D2 with a three-foot um, octobox on the front of it. And I'm just going to place this in here. Now I'm placing this in such a position uh, so that it's in front of the, uh, the subject, more or less. And we are, we'll just tidy that up a little. Uh, and also relatively close. So by having it like this, we're going to have um, quite a large fall off. So that will make the background um, go dark. OK, so with that in something like position, we'll just turn the flash sync trigger on and just turn the head on. So this is set at an arbitrary energy level. Um, so just with everything as it is, I'll take a test image to set the exposure. Right, so we can see from uh, this test image, uh, it's possibly a little dark. Um, I could do with maybe um, one stop more. So I'm going to add one stop of energy uh, to this light. So just select the light, add one stop, and grab that again. There we are, that's a bit better. So that's what we had before, and this is what we've got now. OK, so that's it for the flash. That's uh, more or less set. I don't think we'll be altering that. Uh, what we need to do now is set up the next part of the, uh, the technique, if you like. And that employs this. And this is uh, just a retort stand with a piece of cardboard tube in it. And I'm going to use this so that I can target 
um, the jar precisely um, with the jelly beans. So what I'm going to do is just place this on the stand here. And I'm lining it up just by eye so that it's more or less in line with the jar in this plane. Okay, so if I just get a few jelly beans here and I just drop them in the end, like so. There we go. So I know now that every time that I drop the jelly beans from this spot, they will always end up going in the jar. It's a simple little thing, but very effective. Okay, so the next thing to do after that will be to set up a continuous light. Now the idea of the continuous light will be to capture um, the streaks of the jelly beans as they drop into the jar. And for that I'm going to use um, this ARRI L7. So with this on now um, I can just turn up the light to full power. Now I've previously set this um, to uh, 5600 uh, Kelvin so that it will match uh, the colour temperature of the flash. That's quite important, otherwise all the streaks that you get will be a different colour to the actual uh, image which is captured with the flash. So this way, these are both the same colour temperature and that will give us uh, consistency, hopefully. Okay, so this is pointing vaguely in the right direction. What I want to do is just focus the, the beam a bit. So I'm just going to turn this until I get a a bit of a spot just above the, uh, the jar, something like that. Right, so with that in place now, uh, I'll just take a test image uh, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so that's uh, looking pretty good. You can see just the very top of the cardboard tube here, so I'll just adjust that to get it out of the way. So we'll just move that ever so slightly, like so, uh, and just do another test just to make sure everything's still on target. Yeah, that's not too bad. Good. Okay, so with that set as it is, um, it's not making a great deal of difference to the whole of the exposure. And that's because I still have the shutter speed set uh, for the flash sync speed on the camera. Now what I actually want is a much, much longer shutter speed, which will allow me to capture the motion of the beans as they fall into the jar. So what I'm going to do is just change that from 1 250th of a second, and I'm going to take it all the way down to a 30th of a second. So that will change the continuous light exposure, but it won't make any difference at all to the exposure coming from the flash. So if I just now capture another image... So with this new shutter speed, at first sight, it doesn't seem to be that different. However, what I'm going to do is just temporarily turn off the flash. So I'll just turn off that head and we'll capture another image. You can see in this that we're getting a highlight which is running down uh, the middle of the jar here. Now I'd like to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is just use this flag uh, again on a retort stand. and I'm just going to place this so that it just stops the light hitting the front of the jar. So if I just put that about there somewhere, like so, we'll just grab another image. There, that's much better. I don't mind the highlights on the rim, uh, but I didn't want it along the front of the jar. OK, so it's probably time to do a bit of a test now, just to see if the shutter speed that I've selected uh, is going to work properly. 
Uh, and just to help things along a little, what I'm going to do is change the camera from single frame shooting to high speed continuous. So what that will do is just carry on taking images uh, as long as I've got my finger on the, uh, on the shutter. OK, so armed with a jar of jelly beans, what we'll do is just grab a few of those. pop them in the tube and fire the shutter. There we go. So in here, there, we've captured uh, a few streaks from the jelly beans falling into the jar. There, that's working quite well, I think. And that's the right sort of length of streak that I want. So by using a, a high-speed continuous uh, shutter, it means that you don't have to rely on just chance to capture uh, a bean in mid-air. Right, so next thing to do would be to turn the flash on, and we'll give the whole system a full test. OK just restock some jelly beans, take them out of there. So holding my finger on the shutter, off we go. And a few of them went everywhere, but most of them went in the jar, I think. So we'll just review those. We'll just go up and down. There's a few failed, but most of them are good. That's the sort of thing I want. OK, so with that experiment done, now it's just time of doing it uh, a few times and just repeat until you get uh, the result that you want. So a handful of jelly beans at a time. And off we go. OK, so now with all that uh, captured, it just remains to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop, and I've loaded up nine of the uh, images that we captured earlier. Uh, so I'll just run through those. Uh, so this is a fairly classic example. So we've got a nice sharp uh, jelly bean there, and we've got a nice streak uh, caused by the capture with the LED lighting. Okay, so this one's uh, a little more chaotic, it's the sort of thing that I want. And again, more of the same really. Uh, I thought this was quite nice, I quite like that sort of thing. Uh, I thought this might come in handy, we'll see how they merge together. Uh, I might use that, I might not. But you get the idea that you've got quite a lot of variants here uh, to play with. Uh, so what you need to do is find a way to merge all these together. And I think the simplest way to do that will be just to get Photoshop to make me a stack of all of these uh, images on separate layers. So go to File, down to Scripts, down to Load Files into Stack, ask it to add the open files, and just click on OK. So Photoshop will go through and just make a different layer for each of the images, which we've got here. So in order to uh, merge these, what I'm going to do is uh, select the top one, and then holding down the Shift key, I'll select one up from the bottom, which will uh, give me a selection of all of those in between. And I'm going to change the blend mode 
from normal to lighten. OK, so that makes all of these now visible. It's exactly the same as if you'd done a multiple exposure in the camera. Except this way, you have a lot more control. OK, so let's just see what we need to do. Uh, what I think I might do is just turn these off one at a time just to see what difference it makes to the image. I think that actually improves it slightly. I quite like it without that one as well, actually. OK, so I think I'll stick with that. Uh, I have just this one variant off to the end here, which uh, I think is just a, it's an outlier I'd rather not have. Uh, so now I'll just pick that layer. Uh, and I'm just going to add a mask to that layer. Uh, so making sure that black is the background colour. Uh, and I'm just basically going to paint out um, this bean that I don't want. And because I'm painting it out on the mask, if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter because I can always go back and change it. Right, OK. Now, there's just another couple of bits of tidying up. I've got something in the background here, and I have some speckles on the base. Uh, so I'd just like to tidy those up ever so slightly. So the, the way I'm going to do that is just add another layer. Uh, and I'll just drag that very to the very top. So this is my new layer, uh, and all the changes I'm going to make to this layer here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of these bits in the background, uh, and I'm literally going to paint those out. So making sure this layer is selected, again I've got black, uh, I've got a reasonably small brush, so I'm just going to make that brush a bit bigger and a lot softer, just so it blends in a bit better. We'll just get rid of those two small distractions. OK. Uh, and now, just to get rid of the specks, what I will do is um, just pick a layer and go to the Clone tool, just holding down the Alt key on the keyboard. Sample that. And now go up to the top layer and just paint that bit back in, like so. There we are. And I can use that for most of these specs. You don't have to be that accurate with this. There. Good. Now just to tidy up the stack here a bit, uh, I'm going to just grab the ones that I'm not using and just pop them in the bin. just to make this a little more compact. So I think finally, I'm just going to add a crop. Uh, now, I'm using this for video, so I'm using 16 by 9. Uh, and basically, I think that is more or less what I want. Uh, I might just move that ever so slightly to just grab the very bottom of the jar, like that. Uh, and maybe just bring the edges in slightly just to concentrate the image. OK. And there we have it. So by using continuous light and studio flash, I've been able to capture the motion and also the subject. So I think that's added quite a lot of dynamic effect. And with all the colour going on there and all the streaks, I think that's worked rather well. OK, well, I hope you liked watching how I'd made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like icon. Thank you very much for watching.